Today we are going to be talking about how churches can use email newsletters as a really effective communications tool. If you haven't listened to our last episode on whether churches should have a blog on their website, it might be worth going back and giving that a listen first, as the two work together quite nicely. Either way, enjoy the episode. When we talk about email newsletters, we're talking about regular content that is distributed through email. These could be weekly, fortnightly, monthly, termly, or however you choose for your frequency. And email is a great way to keep connected with your congregation, you know, with your church family, and also with anyone else who might be interested in what's going on. But they can seem like quite a lot of work, especially considering we're already contacting people, people in other ways. For example, we're already sharing the notices at the beginning of services, but people will likely forget that first 20 minutes by the time they've left the church. No shade to those that are leading, leading the services, but just remember that people have a lot to take in. Mm -hmm. So the things that you start with won't necessarily still be fresh in their mind by the time that they're leaving. Or with social media where we share stuff, but there's no guarantee that people will even see the content we're putting out there, even if they're actively following our accounts. You know, thank you algorithms. <laughs> Suddenly, a direct route to people's email inboxes seems quite appealing. And the stats suggest that email is still one of the most effective ways to communicate with our audience. So why is that? And what are some advantages to email newsletters that we can rattle through? Yes. So we'll go through this quite quickly because we've got a lot of different pros and cons. In the <laughs> first instance of um, sort of a positive thing, you know, the reality is, despite what I'd love, not everyone is on social media, not everyone will be on every platform, but the likelihood is that most people, regardless of age, demographic, will have an email address and it will be fairly likely that they'll be happy to receive emails from their church. Emails keeps people updated with what's going on in your church without having to spend a long time sharing every detail of every event in the Sunday morning notice segment, especially if you're trying to recruit or ask for something that's a bit more kind of inclusively church family, please come and volunteer in this. We're looking for support for that. That might not feel appropriate to share sort of publicly on a Sunday service. Newsletters gives us a kind of halfway house sort of something like that whilst not completely private it's a lot lot less public than sharing sensitive details with the world via social media or our church website it's a good way to keep people thinking about church throughout the week again if you've mentioned all of the sort of recruitment things or the the events that people need to remember by kind of monday morning they'll have forgotten about it whereas if you're sending something on a wednesday or thursday actually it's keeping church sort of at the forefront of their mind throughout the week and the reality is that not all church attendees um, will be that week's attendees, if that makes sense, in that you can send an email to everyone in the church family, whether they are frequent goers, whether they sort of are occasional, whereas they're holiday visitors or they um, attend seasonally because of work or student. Um, and you can get people that would slip through the gaps. Exactly. So it's a great way of speaking to all the church family rather than just those attending on that Sunday service. Now, whilst flyers and posters are great, actually a weekly newsletter, email newsletter, is cheaper and more environmentally friendly than print. You know, generally speaking, you can do it for free, but if you do choose to pay for a tool, you know, it's actually unlikely to break the bank. Whereas if you were to do the printing costs, weekly for the same sort of content that probably actually would end up being quite expensive it's also brilliant to be able to track who's reading your content and what links are most popular you can see what people are interested in who's actually reading them and who aren't at all um, whether that's something that you want to follow up on but it's a great way of actually seeing who's engaging with your content yeah it can help you to sort of make decisions going forward as well and that's something yeah. that we don't tend to say a lot as we're talking about sort of ground level stuff, but a lot of what we do online, there's stats behind it. And so we can, in a non creepy way, sort of track, at least track trends and track what's yeah. working and what isn't and sort of make decisions based on that. Yeah. yeah. It's informative rather than yeah. directive. Email can also give you uh, an immediate response. So yeah. you can encourage users to take an action straight away, something which 
they couldn't necessarily do if they've just glimpsed a, a flyer whilst they got coffee in their hand so they put it in their pocket and they forget or if they you give a notice in church and you haven't said right now go and do this right now because there's another item to go on to um so you can include a direct link to what you're speaking about uh whether that's the latest sermon whether it's the giving page or if it's updates about mission partners and people can take the response that you want to ask them to do they can do it right then and there mm. And whilst posting on social media is great, everything tends to be in sort of smaller bite-sized chunks. Whereas in emails, you can have everything in one place. It can be a lot easier to read rather than just getting little bits of information here or there or trying to keep track of all the information so that when you actually need it later on, you know where it is. Yeah. And then we sort of touched on this earlier, but with email, you have direct control over who you're messaging. So people who follow you on social media that can come and go and even then there's no guarantee your followers will actually receive your message or, or see your post whereas with email apart from a couple of issues with spam from time to time you can know who you're messaging and that they're going to receive it and whilst people can unsubscribe and you have to give them that option it's a legal requirement if they're invested in the church if they are interested in what's going on it's it's pretty likely that they're going to actually want to receive the emails each week so we think email is a great tool for churches to be using for their comms but of course nothing is perfect so here are some challenges that can come along with email yeah i mean the reality is and we say this probably with everything that we cover it is another thing to add to your to-do list and it can take a bit of time and with that said, once you have a template and a routine and a set style and a design in place, it can be fairly easy to add the information in each time, but it still adds time. It can be fairly simple to add the information each time, and it's likely that you'll be able to abbreviate the text content from other longer content forms that you've already written. So you don't have to kind of rewrite everything from scratch. But again, the fact is it still will take time to compile this all together. Another thing to think about is that you do need permission to email everyone and you really need to have as much of the church family um, or those involved in the church on the list as possible um, for it to be effective. You know, mm. generally, as long as you're not overwhelming people with too many messages, kind of my experience is that they're only too happy to be on the list. Even if they've left the church, it's nice to know what the church is doing and probably most of it is, I don't say irrelevant, but actually sometimes it's nice to know what's going on with mission partners or parts of the church family. So yeah, have permission, but most of the time people are happy to be on the list. Then if you get, you know, if you're blessed to have a bigger list, it can end up costing a bit of money to message them. But if it proves an effective tool, then actually the cost is very likely one that you can justify. Yeah, for sure. So thinking about how to actually go about mailing people regularly, um, you know, having some sort of CRM, some sort of um, mailing system, it will make your life easier. It will make mm. the emails look better. So things like MailChimp, Email Octopus or MailerLite, there's some examples of those. Maybe you're already using a church management system like Church Suite, and that will likely have some simple messaging built into it and list management but it will probably also have the ability to link some of the other tools like MailChimp for more customization. And whilst these tools can seem a bit daunting, they will give you a lot more control over what you're sending and who you're sending it to. Um, it will really make it easy to manage your email list um, because the tool will take care of any unsubscribes for mm. you and you can segregate into different lists as well. That's something we'll come on to. Yeah. And really importantly, these tools will also go a long way to helping you avoid data breaches, something which is just way too easy to do if you are using Outlook or just manually emailing out people, copying and pasting messages into a BCC field. Please don't do that. We've yeah. all seen the examples where everyone's emails just get shared with everyone else on there. Yeah. So we said about getting permission, you know, you would need to gather the data somehow. The chances are that you already have a database full of emails and you may already have explicit permission to send to them. This is especially the case if you have a membership or an electoral role or that sort of thing. But you might also want to consider putting a sign-up form on your website or a link to one on social media so that people can choose actively choose to find out more and sign up onto your list. And then don't forget to mention your emails from the front of the church. You know, mm. you will have space for it because you've created so much space by shrinking all of your notices down because the full content can be found in an email um, and you don't have to give out 
every notice and every detail about every notice every Sunday. But yeah, mention it up the front and remind people that it's there and they can be involved with it. Yeah. And so once you've got your sending permission, once you've imported your email list to one of these tools, you'll obviously need to actually build your email template. And whilst you can absolutely send text only emails, spending just a bit of time up front to create a template which is attractive will pay off over time. You can use the same format for each send and their people will and so people will know what to expect and you can just slot things in there. You can slot your content in there without having to worry about design. When it comes to creating each email, you can use your template, but do have an interesting subject and some preview text that people will see before they open it. Try to you know, make it different each time, have a bit of variety so it's not just the same thing. And that will help people to not just glaze over when they see church weekly update. Um, you know, you can give them a little preview, a little incentive to um, click through and read more. So maybe have a featured story at the beginning of the email, yeah. maybe have something encouraging and uplifting because you know, there's enough rubbish going online as it is. So you don't need to start the emails with just boring news or, you know, details of the cleaning rotor and that you need uh, volunteers to, you know, paint a sign or something. Have a story to get it going. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't need to be some kind of big, um, we've raised a million pounds for BMS or something like that. But even saying, oh, look at this um, sort of project that we've been working on. Look at what the kids did over the um, holiday club. Yeah. Um, again, just something that kind of shows a bit of the church's family, sort of the identity, but also something that maybe people wouldn't see normally. So if it's something like, I don't know, the front door's been painted, like everyone can see that, but actually share something that sort of people might not normally ha get to hear about. Yeah. And, you know, we said in our last episode about blogs that stories are super important. And so this is exactly the place to feature those stories that you're not having to create extra content because you've already created it for your blog. You yeah. can just put it in there. You can have the first few lines and then link to the blog. But it's something that just sort of, yeah, gets things going and gets people into it. Mm. And then sometimes with emails, it can be better to do sort of smaller messages more frequently rather than like a monthly message which has everything in it because that can become quite overwhelming and difficult to read especially if you're on mobile and it takes forever to scroll through it um so whatever you do though being consistent is really important yeah because you you will need to find the right balance for your church you know based on the size based on the amount of information you need to put out the different things that are going on and based on what resonates with people you know people i'm sure will give you feedback whether you ask for it or not <laughs> yeah and this kind of takes us on to then segmentation, which is a sort of fancy marketing way of saying breaking down your lists into smaller chunks or segments. You know, this is probably um, more appropriate sort of for larger churches, you know, where it can be helpful to have different lists aimed at, aimed at different groups. And this could be either a regular email sort of think kind of monthly updates about youth groups that may not be of interest to those without children or for one-offs such as upcoming men's breakfast that is probably quite unlikely to be particularly appealing to the ladies of your church. Segmentation can be really helpful to avoid repeatedly sending messages to people in your audience for whom they're just not going to find that content relevant but it can also be a useful way of giving people options of what they're subscribed to. Yeah, for sure. One example of this is with a prayer list. Now, it's unlikely that this will be public facing on social media, on your website. So you're probably not going to have a sign up form on your website for the specific list, especially if you're dealing with more sensitive information within the church family. And thinking back to what Judith said in our privacy episode, even with an internal list, we do need to be really careful about how much personal information we include. Do we really need to include everyone's surnames and sort of everything that they're asking for prayer for? Yeah, if you've not listened to our chat with Judith in episode 22, we'd definitely recommend it and have a think about how this relates to privacy. Absolutely. But beyond this internal, external messaging, you may just find that some people want to be on the prayer mailing list and some do not. Giving these people the option to choose what they subscribe to helps them to feel in control rather than constantly being nagged and will likely mean that they're more switched on to things that they do actually receive. 
where this segmentation does become really powerful is where you combine it with other data that you have in your database. Hmm. For example, most church management systems include some sort of small group functionality. So you can filter based on this and only send notices to, about small groups to those who are signed up to one. Um, or for a large church, you might even filter sort of based on location if you're doing a prayer walk in a certain part of town and you want to send an email to those that live within a certain radius it there's so many different things that you can do and actually create a kind of I suppose richer experience of or a richer community and sort of relationship between the church because actually they feel that they're being sort of specifically told about what's going on yeah yeah and having these you know different messages for different lists and different based on your data it can be really helpful but at the same time, don't go too far the other way. It doesn't mean that no. you have to be super exclusive with your content. So thinking again about that example of a men's breakfast, it might be that most months you just send that email out to the men of your church. But every now and then you might want to include it in more of a general message because it could be that there are ladies in the church who would tell friends or family members about that event that they might be interested in it. So yeah, vary it up. Yeah, definitely. Not just um, oh, we've only told you because you're in the club for it but actually that everyone does know but yeah sp yeah specify it down when needed so this has been a bit of a whistle stop tour there's so much you can do with email newsletters mm -hmm. you know we've only really scratched the surface but if this isn't something that you've really thought about before hopefully we've been able to get you just a little bit excited about it and and the possibilities at the same time as with everything as we always say this could be overwhelming so yeah. we would suggest starting simple as always you know, just stretch those comms muscles a little bit, explore how email newsletters might work to uh, help build stronger relationships within your community, both inside and outside the church, and then go from there. Yeah, absolutely. So we hope this episode has been helpful in um, helping you to navigate how emails can be a useful tool for your church comms. Mm. We're going to be back next week with a guest, which is very exciting. But in the meantime, if you have found this podcast helpful, we'd love it if you could share this episode and actually the whole podcast would be lovely with others who might also find it helpful. We've recently taken our own advice on content repurposing, our kind of buzzword for the minute, <laughs> and um, create sort of some of the short form contents from the podcast that are easy to share on social media. So if you haven't already, please do connect with us on most um, platforms. I'm, I'm working my way on getting us on everything, but you can find us uh, with the username at GP Podcast UK. So we look forward to seeing you next week. <laughs>